Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Croso, welcome. We'll be starting soon. You will need a chair. We won't be sitting in the chair for the whole practice, but we will be using the chair to help us with the practice. <coughs> um, if anyone could give me a heart or a like or a heads up to make sure you can hear me. And what would also be good is if you had a block. If you haven't got a block, because not everybody has a yoga block at home, you could have a book, maybe um, quite a thick novel, or even a cushion, you know, because we're going to do some work with the cushion or the block between the legs. I'm in a slightly dark place this morning because I'm in a friend's house and it's been raining so hopefully you can see me and hear me okay. So this practice is going to start off in the chair, come to standing and then we will be doing some work on the floor but not on our knees. I've had a number of people come to me recently who cannot come down on all fours because of knee issues. So the practice we're going to look at today is going to hopefully help those issues, <clears throat> maybe create a little bit of motion, which can, you know, bring a little bit of lotion to the joints. But this is um, a yoga practice from a therapeutic perspective. So I want you to ensure that you only work within your limitations and if anything becomes acute pain, obviously you back straight off, you don't do it, but you try slowly. We will work slowly and mindfully uh, with attention to the breath throughout the practice and I invite you to notice the subtle sensations in the body, okay? There will be some um, work that may challenge you but go to the kind of sweet edge of your limitations as opposed past the limitations. Some of you will know me, some maybe not because I'm asking to share this um, this practice sharing is caring on a Sunday with as many people as possible. It's a way of me documenting my uh, year uh, training as a yoga therapist. I'm already a qualified and accredited yoga teacher of some six years in lots of different um, kind of types of yoga, whether it's for pregnancy, postnatal, hatha yoga, classical yoga, those kinds of things which take a holistic approach. But I'm now moving towards um, using my training and skills as a yoga teacher in a therapeutic way, in an applied way to help people create space for healing in their own bodies and also addressing issues um, of the mind and the breath, the physical, the whole, the whole person, because we are not machines with something going wrong, so we have to go in for a MOT and get one thing fixed. Sometimes these things are all linked together and we can manifest a pain which is caused from you know, could be past trauma or stress or anxiety, those kinds of things. So it's a slightly different approach. Um, please share. I really am keen for as many people as possible to get the practices. I remind you I'm not a doctor, so if you're coming here in what is a public forum um, with an individual issue, then I can't address that through the screen. Um, what I can do is help you with practices that may um, help you to accommodate that in addition to you fitting, you know, um, you, you have to go and see your doctor, your nurse about these different things. So, um, yeah, so knees. Okay, so we're going to start in the chair. So make sure the chair has plenty of room around it and there's no arms. Um, I've just got an ordinary kitchen chair. Okay, your feet need to be really firmly planted onto the floor. So if you're a little person, and your feet don't really reach the floor very well, then put a block or even a cushion. I prefer not a cushion though, but it can help. 
um, I'd like you to feel firmer than that, so maybe a book, a thick cookery book or something under the feet, so that you feel that you are stable. Okay, I'm sitting up nice and tall. I come to sort of, not totally the edge of my seat, but I'm certainly not slumping back in my seat. I am bringing my spine into an erect position. I'm pressing my sit bones down. My knees are directly over my ankles and sometimes I will change the chair to the side so you can get a better view. So, feet firmly on the floor, hip distance apart, knees directly over ankles and directly in front of hips so you're nicely aligned. This allows you to press your sit bones into the chair, allowing the spine to rise up beautifully but keep the connection with the feet and the floor. Notice how that strengthen, strengthens the legs, strengthens the thighs. And just if you can, if you feel safe and you don't feel wobbly, close your eyes. And just come into the body with your mind. So you are occupying your body. You're occupying that space without worrying what's going on before you, around you what happened this morning, what needs to happen later. Try and allow that to fade away. Placing yourself into a yogic space. So quietening down, settling down is the first thing we do so that we can be completely present in our practice for at least one hour. Eyes are gently closed, they're not gripped. The jaw is soft and loose. Lips can be open. Maybe there's an upward lift from the sternum to the collarbones up through to the crown of the head. So you feel the energy lifting towards the heavens, towards the sky, lifting the energy up, even if it just feels like a kind of energetic uplift, this is fine. But keeping the sit bones planted on the chair so that you feel rooted to the earth and that the energy from the sit bones is also tracking down your uh, thigh bones through the knee joint all the way to the ankle pressing into the floor. So you feel steady, you feel robust, nothing can shift you. Just take a few moments softening the shoulders down away from the earlobes shoulder blades sliding down the back, chest is open but you're not protruding the ribs, no sticking the chest out, just a long straight spine, nice soft demeanour for the face and bring your hands together at your heart. We're practicing yoga, okay, this is a practice of yoga. You can breathe in, blink the eyes open and open up the arms. So you're really just having maybe your first stretch of the day. Hands come together and bring the energy all the way back down, right through the center line. We're going to affect all of the energy channels, even though we're sitting down, we're waking up slowly, breathing in, pressing the feet so you feel alert. You feel alert and ready for action, but you are sitting still, You're just opening the arms so the breath comes out as the arms come down. One more time like that, breathing in, stretch up, stretch right through the fingertips, go as tall as you can out of your chair without moving your bottom away from the chair. Feet are firmly planted, you have an engagement through the earth. And just bring the hands down and maybe you just want to shake out the hands, shake out the hands, shake out the fingers, just getting rid of any stress, tension, but also shifting energy, do the same for the elbows and maybe some nice shoulder rolls. So place the hands gently on the thighs, but in, in, still keep that uh, engagement with the floor so you're not just flopping. Pressing the feet will help you to engage. Nice shoulder shrugs, really big, and the other way, good, good, and we're just going
going to start to um, use the feet, okay? So thinking of the sit bones pressing down and you can even press your hands down to get the sense of really pressing down. So your shoulders, yeah, you're gonna press the hands down, shoulders roll up and back. And I just want you to open the chest and bring the scapula together, the shoulder blades together at the back. So just a nice opening for the chest. If it's safe to do so and you feel you want to, you can look up and breathing out, come back down. Just a nice stretch. We're just gonna do a little forward stretch. Place the feet firmly on the floor, breathe in here. Now breathing out, you're gonna fold from the hip joint. Okay, you're folding from the hip flexors. So you're just leaning forward, you can look to the floor. So you're stretching as though someone's helping you to come out of the chair. Then breathing in, you come back. We're just gonna do that a few times, just to mobilize the spine while we're sitting down. So breathing in here, breathing out, gradual contraction of the abdomen as you come forward to make space and stretch. Breathe in, press those feet, let the feet help you. Notice when you press the feet, how you become stronger how you have something to rebound from. We'll just do another two, breathing in, stretch up as high as you can, breathing out, a gradual contraction of your tummy as you come forward. And maybe you come a little bit further down now, maybe not, it's up to you. Breathing in, press the feet, and breathing out. And you're doing this mindfully with the breath. Every movement is with the breath. So it's quite a slow in-breath, breathing in through the nostrils. And breathing out, slowly contract the belly, come forward as though you're pulling me through the screen and come really low this time if you can. Maybe you drop to the floor, maybe not. Drop your head, take a moment. Breathe in, stretch forward. Please extend the spine as you stretch forward. This will keep your back safe. We're moving gently and slowly because we're all a bit stiff in the morning. And Jen, just shake out. And we just want to do a little twist just to make sure we're mobilizing everything, okay? So left hand to right knee. Right hand behind, it can touch the back of the chair or the seat of the chair behind. So that's where your right hand's going, just opening the chest, breathe in here, breathe out, really move from the spine and twist. We'll just do another breath here, breathing in and breathing out. Just a twist, breathe in, look forward and come forward and shake everything off. And we'll do the other side. Bring your right hand to the outside of your left thigh. Breathe in, left hand behind. Breathe in and you're just going to incline yourself to the left, but without twisting too much. Then we get ready to twist. So breathe in, rise up through the spine. Breathe out. Lower ribs, mid, upper ribs. Don't worry about the head and the neck so much. Don't strain the neck, please. Breathe in, sit tall. And breathe out. See if you can twist the spine a little more. And breathe in, come back. And shake it all out. And do, even though you're sitting in the chair, you're gonna be working. So, I'm just gonna press my chair back a little bit. So make sure you keep drinking water. Keep hydrated. So, we're just going to start with the feet. So again, feet need to be aligned. <clears throat> Ankles under knees, knees in front of hips. Okay? So, just lift up your right leg. Um, I know with some people's knee, it's flexion that's a problem. With other people's knee, it's putting pressure on the kneecap and kneeling down, that's a problem because of operation or wear and tear, osteoarthritis, all those things. But generally we can lift our foot from the floor under our knee and see if you can just flex the foot. Now, the thing that was, is going to help sore knees, um, probably in line if you, if you go and see a physio, 
here, they've advised you, is to strengthen the legs, the muscles surrounding the knee, so that the joint in the knee doesn't have to take all of the work. So as you lift your leg here, you can feel it in the quad. And I want you to just rotate the foot one way and the other way, so that you can also feel in your shin, you'll feel a bit of mobility in the knee, the back of the calf, and also your core. So we need to strengthen the legs so that we give the knees as much help as possible. I have um, osteoarthritis in my left knee. Kind of started from a fall many years ago when I was pregnant with my youngest child who's now 22, <laughs> so it's a long time. And then just flex and extend the knee. And, and you know, this is a freeing movement, okay? So you may only come to here, that's fine. You come to where you're at. I mean, yoga meets people where they're at. Sometimes you wouldn't think so in some classes, but with yoga therapy, it is totally and dedicated to the individual. So I'm having to take a common sense approach here because I'm teaching online. So I'm teaching you yoga from a therapeutic perspective. That's the best I can do online. And just give your muscles a rub, especially if your quads, you know, are not that strong and you're not used to using your legs in this way. Give them a rub, even give your knees a rub. And there's a really nice thing you can do to alleviate knee pain that I've found helpful when I've had a, like media, medial ligament problem on the inside here, is come to the inside of the knee and then track up about, I suppose it's about three inches and you get a little dent there. It's a little dent in the soft tissue. And my goodness, you know, that can feel really tender. It can be really nice to massage there feels tender, it's like when you have a massage and it is tender on your shoulders and neck, but it undoes the knots, you know, and that can be nice. And the left foot, so bringing up the left foot, you can, you know, bring it as high as you like, but really it's just about bending the knee so that you can flick out the left foot and still maintain your core, you're still working, you're bound to be feeling your core, I am, and then rotating the foot using the big toe, do it one way, you can hold the chair if you don't feel stable, and the other way, just using the quad and breathing, breathing in and out slowly, so you feel you're using these quadriceps, you're also using your hip flexor, and your knee is doing some work as well, you're just rotating the lower leg from using the knee but also the ankle joints to guide you and shake it up but don't kick the chair be careful people have got different chairs to me and give your leg a little rub be kind to it maybe just softly rolling over the knee depending i know since my fall 22 years ago i still have you know the, the pins and needles in this area you know it was a big fall and I took a long time to get over it and I think I probably would have had to have surgery if it hadn't been for my yoga. I've managed to avoid surgery so far. So this time, let's see if we can bring the knee a little higher. Now you may need to bring your hands underneath me like this. This may be where you need to be, okay? Or you might be able to bring the knee up and hold the shin, okay? So again, we're doing these rotations. So I want you to just to let the foot be quite floppy, wherever you're holding the foot. Again, keep it away from the chair and don't lean back. There's a tendency once we lift things high to lean back. Try and keep on the sit bones. And again, really go for the nice rotations, opening all of the joints. So we try and create a good energy flow in yoga from the feet up. So we use everything, we don't just isolate. So the knee practice is gonna use everything, but we'll do some specific practices for the knee and just keep going in opposite directions, just getting everything going and maybe stretching it out. So if you're holding under the knee, you just come out as much as you can. Okay, it might not straighten with you, it might just be here. Just see what you can do. And some of you may be able to hold the shin, or just the kneecap. Just holding the shins are not too handy when you want to straighten. And just let the foot down. And just take a moment before we do the other side. Take a moment just to notice.
notice, maybe you can even close your eyes, feel the leg that you've worked. Is there a difference between the right leg and the left leg? Are there are different sensations. What's going on there? And open your eyes and make sure you're sitting strongly. Yeah, again, strong back, soft front, but the belly will contract with the breath as we're using exhalation, we need to gradually contract the belly to protect the lower back and to give us some stability in the chair. Okay, so lifting up the left knee, you can hold it underneath if you like to. And again, just some nice rotations and see if you can get the knee higher this time. Working really slowly. You'd be surprised, you know, you'd be surprised what you can do. Many, many people with lots of limitations you know, feel, um, you know, they feel despondent, they feel that they are pathetic even, they can't do anything. And of course, everybody can do something, even if it's a little bit of yoga therapy lying in the bed, you can do something, you can do the breath. Just keep it going. Good, and now stretch it out and really see as you stretch it out, you breathe in. And as you breathe out, bring the knee up higher. So breathe in, stretch, breathe out. Breathe in, stretch, and breathe out. Good. And just sit and notice. Now I'm going to ask you to come on. We're going to do some movements of coming up and down out of the chair. So I'm going to actually um, turn the chair on the side. I think would give you a better perspective of that. Because um, sometimes when we've had injury or illness, it doesn't matter about age. I sometimes get a bit annoyed that people consider subtle or slow yoga as a gentle form of yoga or only for sick or old people. It's not. Because sometimes we all meet these challenges in our lives where we just, you know, can't do what we normally do. And it has its own intrinsic value. There's lots of science um, papers coming out about the benefit of slow, mindful work, movement, breath, yoga which helps with anxiety and stress and helps to calm the nervous system. So you can see where I'm sitting. I'm not sitting like this. I'm sitting up on my sit bones. My feet are pressing into the floor. And we're going to learn how to get in, up out of the chair without holding on to anything, okay? And this can be really good practice for people who um, have had injury or they are getting this to the stage in life where they feel a little bit less confident about their balance and their stability getting up and down, okay? So we're going to breathe in as we rise up. So you can use your arms for momentum, but I want you to think about the feet because this is going to help the knees again. This is going to help to strengthen the legs, which will help to protect the knees. So breathe in, come on up. And let the arms come down. Okay, so it's just pressing the feet into the floor. So breathe in here. Now I want you to send the butt back. Think about sending the butt back and then coming down. This is almost like, you know, Meruasana, um, mountain pose, you know, where you, and we'll, we'll do a little bit of that, okay? So if we're gonna do that a few times, okay? So feeling nice and straight, nice and robust. My spine is really tall. I'm pressing my feet into the floor. Breathing in, coming up. Now you've got to trust yourself here. Yes, you know where your chair is. Breathing out, bring the butt back and land. Okay, so you've got to trust the seat is there. It's got to be a steady seat. But it's about learning to send your pelvis back as well. Okay, so we're going to do about three more times. Breathing in, come up. Breathing out, come down. And you can start to use more of your belly here and a bit more extension so breathing in come on up stretch right up breathing out pull the belly back bend the knees softly send the pelvis back good arms down let's do it another twice because it is work to do this breathing in up you come pressing the feet into the floor breathing out pelvis back butt back and you can bring your arms down. Let's just try one more time. Breathing in, stretch, breathing out, 
So you're really stretching. And as you sit back, maybe you can put your hands to the floor. Maybe you open the feet a little bit. Drop the head. Maybe you get a little further down this time. Pelvis is back, belly is back, head is down. Maybe the hands can come slightly forward. So you're more or less doing a seated mountain pose. Just extending. Really extend. Now breathe in, push forward. Use your strength of your legs and come up. Okay, with the knees bent, I would like you to bring the right arm across. So you're bringing your right arm across both legs. Right hand, it can be sort of on the thigh area, okay? And you're going to look forward. You can have this hand at the side. And breathe in. Bring this up and over. So nice side bend. Keep the feet engaged. Keep them engaged. Don't think about the knees so much. Put the pressure into the feet and then your knee joints have a release. Breathe in, bring it up. I'm going to turn away from your nan. Sorry, to the other side. Left arm comes on. Right hand, breathing in. And really stretch across. You get a nice opening in the seated position. You can look up if you like to. However you'd like to, breathing in and come up and shake out your hands. Good. We're going to do one more posture in the seat before we come and stand and do some strengthening work for the knees. Okay. okay. So you can bring your knees slightly wider on the seat this time. We're going to breathe in and we're going to send the pelvis back. I mean, it doesn't really move, but the, the, the sort of energy is the pelvis moving back so you can come forward. So it's almost like a wide knee fold, a yeah, wide leg fold, drop down. Breathe in, straighten, look forward. Breathe out, bring that belly back, bring the belly back so you can get further down. So you're breathing out as you bring the belly back. Breathe in, look forward, breathe out, pull it back. One more time, breathe in, look forward, lengthen through the upper spine, right down and breathe out. And breathe in, bring the hands up to the knees. Take a moment, take a moment, maybe you've got a little bit of lightheadedness, so Accommodate that and breathe in, press the knee into the floor and stand up. Good. So we're standing, so we will need the chair on the side, but just put it to the side for now so you don't kick it or anything like that. I'm just going to take a sip of water. And we're just going to do a little bit of balance work up and down on our toes. I'm on a bit of a squishy carpet here. I prefer a firm surface, but whatever you've got going, you've got going. This is not my usual space, so I've got what I've got. So, we're just going to come up and down on the toes. So, first of all, you're going to breathe in and bring the heels up off the floor as you stress. Now, press into the toes, come as high as you can. Again, this is going to be strengthening for the whole legs, the ankle joints, everything, and will also help your knees. Breathing out, slowly as you can, slowly. Arms descend, same time as the heels. So make it incredibly slow, okay? And if you wobble, don't worry. If you need to hold the chair with one hand as you come up and down, do so, because you will get stronger. That's fine, breathing in. We have to start where we are. No point in trying to start where somebody else is. Up as tall as you can, as tall as you can, now breathe out, slowly, 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 slowly as you can, dropping the heels to the floor. And just notice the quality of the mind and the breath as you do this, breathing in, we're going for six, 
breathing out. I'm just joining my hands at the top. I know you can't see the full frame. Just don't let the heels come down until the hands come down, strengthening the legs, holding onto the wall of the chest perfectly fine. Breathing in, stretch. Now breathe out, pull the belly back, but stay up. Stay up, reach further up as you breathe in. Breathe out, pull the tummy back. Breathing in. And breathe out, pull it back. Come on, pull it back, stay up. Challenge yourselves, breathe in here. And breathe out as slowly, please, as slowly, 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 slowly come down. Okay, and shake out your arms and shake out your feet. So we're going to um, try some more hip poses, but in a different way. So if you're already used to practicing yoga, don't judge, just go with it, because I'm doing this for a specific reason. Okay, so come onto your mat and bring your left foot forward and your right foot back. But I don't want them to be on a train track, how I would normally practice, because we're looking after knees. So make sure your left foot is a little bit further left and your right foot a little bit further right. And there's about, um, I suppose, maybe the length of your legs distance, but you have to feel stable. I don't want you to feel wobbly. You can have the chair like this in front of you in case you feel you need that security, yeah? Because there is a certain amount of balance involved. The feet are pointing forward. Okay, now if that hurts your right knee, you can open the right foot a little bit, okay? If that feels better, you know, on the knee. So what we're going to do, the hips are facing forward. The legs are straight to start with if they can be, unless you have to bend them a little because of issues. But think about your feet. Think about the feet that are the base to your um, strength, your stability, your balance. And this is where you're going to put your weight. Don't think about the knees because I think you know sometimes when we're protecting something we can think about them and we actually bring the pain there. So think about the feet being your stability and we're going to breathe in and bend the left knee so that it comes over the ankle. It doesn't go any further so you're not over um, stretching. Um, the knee is coming over the ankle as we breathe in here. As we breathe out, pull your tummy back and straighten gently to the best of your ability, to whatever your straight knee is. Breathing in, press into the feet. Don't think, well, I'm using my joint here. No, the foot, if you press into the front foot, you will not, um, it's very unlikely you'll feel pressure in the knee. Use the foot. Breathing out, bring the belly back and drop the arms. Breathing one more time here. And as you breathe out, really see if you can bring the belly back as you straighten the knee. Now I want to show you something. So I'm, I'm still doing the same leg, okay? I'm not changing the leg. I just need to be onto the camera this side for now. So we're in the same position. Left leg is forward. Left leg is forward. Right foot is behind, but we're not on a train track, okay? And we're slightly wider than that. I'm going to breathe in, softly bend my left knee, there you go. Then I'm bringing my left hand to the outside, just above the knee, and I'm pressing my left hand into that knee. I want to keep it stable and strong. It's over my ankle, breathe in here. Breathe out, pull the tummy back. Resist the hand against the knee. So the knee is sort of pushing into the left hand. The left hand's pushing into the knee. Breathing in, keep it there. Breathing out. Pull it back. Pull it back. Press into those feet. Your feet are the gift, okay? The feet. Breathing in. And breathing out. Left hand goes into the knee. Yeah? So I'm just pressing gently. 
and then I drop. So we're just creating some strength, some stability, some distance. And we're going to try the other side. So right foot <coughs> is in front. Okay. And left foot comes behind. And the breath and pulling of the tummy back is very important to keeping you stable, to giving you strength and stability. Left foot back. Again, mine is slightly turning out. It's not turning completely forward, but it's only like you know a couple of inches. So you start with straight legs, nice strong back. You're going to breathe in, bring the right knee over the right ankle. Breathe out, bring the belly back. I'm thinking about the tummy coming back as you exhale, breathing in. Feet are really planted, strong outside foot at the back, strong outside foot, knee not overshooting the ankle, breathing out, bringing in back, breathing in here, stretch, stretch, press into the feet, don't lose the connection, breathing out, bring it down. This time you're going to breathe in, bend the right knee, bring your right hand outside. So, you know, just outside here. It's, it's on the quad really, but just on the outside of the knee. Make sure that it's a resistance. So you're pressing the side of the knee into the hand, the hand into the knee. It's strong. Back foot is really strong. Breathe in here. Now breathe out. Pull the tummy back. Press into the feet, breathing in, breathing out, tummy back, press into that knee, press it, press into the side, press into the feet, press into the feet, breathe in, breathe out, worry about clipping, the cute pain is the thing you need to watch for, and drop the hand. So you're using everything there, and breathe in, come up. You will need your chair now. <coughs> So please bring the chair to the top of your mat, the back of the chair. And we're going to do some nice forward folds. Before we do that, I'd like to just shake up the knees. So stand on your left foot. And just place the whole of the weight into the left foot. And just see if you can bring the fingertips of the right hand into the little you know, the little dent there in your hip. My dent might be bigger than others. Got some squishiness around my hips. Just shake it out. Come on, shake it out. Good. And drop it down. And notice, close your eyes. Notice how the right leg feels. You must notice these things because otherwise you might be thinking, why the hell am I doing this? If you don't notice anything. Yeah, so onto the right foot. Lift the left leg and just shaking out from the knee joint, you know, just flipping it. If that feels okay, you might feel better, you know, moving the whole leg. But I'm just shaking out here. Now, I'm going to hold, uh, you can hold the chair. You know, you can hold the chair. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to bring the chair onto the side actually for the first leg, okay, because we're going to do three way shaking. Make sure there's room, <laughs> don't kick anything. Okay, don't kick anyone behind you or something like that. So standing on the left, I want you to shake out. I want you to bring these fingertips into the side here. There, that little squishy part, okay? Just where the joint is. Flick out in front. You can hold onto the chair if you need to. It's fine. Do what you need to do. So there, then side, then side, then back. Yeah? So front, side, back. Front, side, back. We'll do one more. Front, side, back. Now bring it down. Now close your eyes. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel that my right leg is about twice as long as my left. I feel more grounded into the floor on my right. We'll try the other side. Okay? try the other side so it's quite nice to have the chair on the side or if you have good balance you you know you can just hold your hip okay it's up to you so 
left fingers into this little dent in the hip breath and just shaking out the left knee first and you don't have to go crazy shaking it it's just getting some space and to the left and behind we do that a few times don't worry about some clicking i get some clicking it's pain you need to avoid and if you're already seeing a physio, take these movements to your physio and ask him if you think this is helpful. He will soon tell you, he or she. And back, and one more. Ooh, boom, boom. And standing up. And just close your eyes and see if you feel any difference in the whole leg, around the knee, around the hip, ankle, feet. <sighs> Notice the aliveness, the sensations, the energy that's moving. We are trying to move energy in yoga. We're trying to move it up the body. Okay, we're trying to open things up so that the energy can flow well, so that we avoid suffering and issues and heaviness and dullness and lethargy. Good. We're going to do some forward folds with the chair. Okay, so bring the chair to the front of your mat. And you need to sort of judge how far away to stand. I think probably that's okay for me. So hip distance with the feet. Hip distance with the feet. And soften the knees. If you press the feet into the floor, the knee joints are soft. Press the feet into the floor. Don't try and stand straight by uh, hyperextended knees and drawing them back. Press the feet into the floor. Invite the shins forward. You know, you'll feel the belly drop back. You'll feel a tightening in between the thighs. Press the feet. Very important. I'm breathing in here. Now I'm going to soften my knees. I'm going to soften them. So I don't think of bending them. I think of softening them. It makes a big difference to how they feel. And I'm coming all the way. Don't drop the belly. I'm just going to go a bit further back with my legs because it's not enough of a stretch for me. So coming without dropping the belly. Breathe here and bring the belly back. So when you breathe in, fill up and lengthen. When you breathe out, draw the tummy back. You can bend the knees as much as you like if it feels better for you. One more time here. Breathing in and draw the belly back. Now, you're halfway down, okay? You're halfway down, so we're not going to come straight back up. I just want to see if you can bend the knees a bit more and maybe let the body come down, the upper body head come down towards the floor. Breathing in, uncurl. Press now, you must press through the floor. Press through the floor give you the strength to come up okay so uh, we're going to do that again so make sure this time you're close enough to the chair so that when we come down for the forward fold we can actually bring ourselves back up okay so I want you to come down to the floor then with bent knees because we haven't done a lot of work on the back so keep your back protected by bending the knees and bringing the belly back so breathing in here Breathing out, soften the knees and stretch forward. Stretch forward as though somebody's got you on a pulley. But don't dip down too much of the chest and the belly. Now press the knees into the floor, the feet into the floor, bend the knees, breathe in and come up. And open. This again is going to strengthen the legs. Okay, and give you some confidence in the knees as well, breathing in. Because we all get a bit scary about lowering our knees and things like that soften the knees soften them and belly back and you stretch forward so we're getting a nice spinal extension and we're also doing some strength work so bottom is back knees are softly softly bent but i'm close enough to the chair i know i can get back up from here breathing in push through the floor and open out we're just going to do one more like that taking it really slow breathing in stretch it up Breathing out, bend the knees, 
come forward, stretch forward, then you land. Yeah? You might not want the chair, you know, if you're strong enough, don't use it, it's fine, I'm just demonstrating. Press in, breathe in. Good. Good, 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 and shake it out. Shake it out. So a lot of the time people have problem with flexion. Um, so not only could they not get onto the floor on hands and knees because it's just too painful because of whatever's gone on, they find they can't flex the knee. So we're going to do something to help with that, to maybe encourage it, because we sometimes can build it up bit by bit, okay? So sometimes, you know, you see um, the footballers, you know, they stretch their quads like this, and they bring in the foot up to the butt, and maybe you can bring it further. But if that's not possible for you, so that, let's give you a choice actually. So join me, yes, so I'm gonna do it on the side. So if you don't need the chair, I would say that you need to press into the foot, bring the knee up in front of you first, if this is possible, then see if you can catch the ankle, and just bend the knee so that you get a quad stretch, and maybe you can even bring it back, you know, you might be able to bring it back and balance. This is possible, you might want to lean onto the chair. Or if you feel, no, that is totally impossible, I can't do that with my knee. Maybe you can stand on the left foot and bring um, the foot up onto the chair. Sorry, my chair wobbled a bit then, which is not good. So you're bringing the foot onto the chair and you're standing up straight, which will help then with stretching the quad, but the flexion is not too much for you. Try this. This can be quite nice, yeah? Just make sure the chair is, I'm on a bit of a carpet here, which is not the best thing. It needs to be an even, flat, firm surface, really. And I can feel my quad stretching here without it doing too much difference to my knee. So this can be quite nice. Okay, and then we try taking it off. Again, you can hold onto the chair at any time and just shake it off. However you've been doing it, shake it off and you do the other side. So I'm going to stand on my right foot, bring my knee up. And then I'm catching my ankle. And I'm just giving my breath. When I breathe out, as long as I bring my belly in, I can maintain my balance, looking forward, breathing in. Breathing out, and then if I want to, I can maybe stretch a little bit more. This is up to you. You can hold the chair with the back facing you is easier probably, or even the wall. Okay, bring it back. If that is just not possible for you, let's see a safer way of getting on. So this is what I'm going to do, because it wobbled a bit before. I'm going to bring my knee up. And then I'm going to turn around, okay? So it's whatever can be sorted out by you. And again, I'm going to stand up straight, breathing in. Breathe out, I bring my belly back. I bring it back. And I'm getting a really nice opening here. I'm getting a stretch for my quad. And you can put, you know, your knee actually on the chair. But my knee is safe. It doesn't feel it's flexing too much. I haven't got any pain. And I can get pain in this knee. This is my dodgy one. Couple of breaths. And then bend the right knee. You might need a wall, a chair, whatever. And bring it back down. And just shake it out. Shake it out. I'm actually not going to stand on this because it's interfering with my carpet. Okay, so. Now we're going to do some leg extensions. And again, actually, you know, you can hold on to the chair for this. We'll make it much more um, available to you. And you can sit on the chair, and I will show you how to do that as well. So bring the right knee up. And you can hold on or not hold on. It's up to you, okay? Stretch it out. Woo! Feel that in the leg. And back. And down, okay? So breathing in. Stretch it out, breathing out, and back, okay? And obviously the higher you go, the more work it is. 
So breathing in, stretch it out, come back. Okay, so to practice that on the chair, which might be the thing you need to do, is, and I'll just demonstrate with this leg because it's closer to the camera, is bring it in, stretch it out, and you're sitting up straight, come back. So do that a few times on the chair, stretching in and out, come back. We'll just do it another time. Breathing in, stretch. See if you can extend it, keep up, it's nice and strong for the leg. Breathing out and back. So you need to do both legs, okay? I did my right leg standing, I did my left leg sitting, so whatever leg you haven't done, breathing in and out and back, breathing in and out and back. Let me do the last time, breathing in and out and back. And just sit for a while or stand for a while, however you're doing it. Check whatever I said. So if you have got a block or a book or a cushion, I'm just going to do a little practice to again strengthen thighs, strengthen legs. And we'll do it standing. Everyone can stand for this if they can. Again, if you need to have a chair nearby to hold on to, that's fine. So I've got a yoga block, a very light one. These are available in TK Max, they're only about four or five quid, I think. But a book or a cushion can be fine. It's just about gripping in between the thighs. So we are putting the block in between the thighs. And it's more of a hugging than a complete squeezing, okay? You're not like squeezing the thing for, you know, near death. Okay, so I put it in between my thighs. So <clears throat> I just want to hug it. I want to hug it a bit. And notice how that feels around the butt, around the thigh, in the core. And the feet really pressing down. So we're going to see if we can maintain the hug feeling as we bend the knees softly. And think, think of them as, yes, think of them as softly folding rather than bending. Even the word. See if you can come quite far down. At the butt. You don't have to be all the way down like on the chair. Just you know, as how, however it feels good for you. And back up. Breathing in. Nicely squeeze, hug them, hug them, hug them. So, you know, the knees don't come too far forward, okay? Butt goes back. Squeeze, maybe you can't even bend the knees, maybe it's here, that's fine. You're strengthening your legs. Breathing in and out. We'll just do that one last time. Okay, breathing in here. Breathe out, soften them ah, like they are melting. So if you think of them melting, you're more likely here, using the arms, look up, come on, it's strength as well, strength, strength in the legs, press now, press through those feet, press, breathing in, and breathing out, good, so we are coming to the floor now, so take a drink of water before you come down. Make sure your chair is not in the way, I'm going to just move mine over here. And hopefully you can see me on the floor, yeah, you can see the carpet, that's fine. So come down whichever way suits you, you can hold onto the chair to come down, but a nice way to come down, <coughs> if you do have um, issues, you know, coming all the way down from the floor, you can't squat coming down, uh, you will need to use the knee to a certain degree, obviously. So I'm just bending my front knee, and I'm just gently, gently, Gently coming down to the right. And that might suit some of the issues, it might not suit others. So come down however you like. And come onto the floor. Please come onto the floor. Yeah, you can see me there. I'll talk anyway, even if I seem to be disappearing from the frame. <laughs> okay, so I'm lying down. I'm bringing my knees in as much as I can. Some people would be able to bring them up closer than others. 
I'm just giving my back a nice little massage because we've been doing a lot of work standing and sitting straight and all these things. And then I'm bringing my feet together and my knees apart, as apart as much as possible without pressing them apart. Just let them fall apart in what's called Bardo Supta Bardokanasana. Yeah, it's a supported butterfly pose. So with the feet together, your feet may not be that close to the pelvic floor, they might be away, it depends on your hips. But just let them be wherever they are. With the knees just falling towards the floor, but maybe never getting there. Shoulders are engaged with the floor. Arms are open and hands are facing upwards. You can even close your eyes and just enjoy this stretch for a moment. Allowing the lower back to become more and more engaged with the floor. So the way of doing that is when you breathe in, you lengthen and fill up the belly. And when you breathe out, gradual contraction of the belly will get your lower back to the floor more easily. So we're going to bring the knees in, but very slowly. We're not bringing them in like this, you know. We're bringing them into the count of 30, which I will count. And I want you to gradually, gradually, gradually bring the knees up into this position, okay? So they're from an open position to a closed position. So feel comfortable, comfortable on the floor. The breath will come in and out naturally. So we're going to come closer with the knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, slow, fourteen, fifteen, halfway, so they shouldn't be more close than halfway, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So really slowly, that, oh, that is so nice. That will strengthen up the inner thigh muscles. We're just going to do it <clears throat> one more time, but bring the knees off the floor for now. Bring the hands to the knees if you can. Shoulders are on the floor. Let the knees drop away. So it's only the hands holding on to them. Let the knees drop completely away. Let the feet be floppy. Breathe in here. Breathe out. Gradually contract the tummy as you bring the knees towards the chest. Breathe in, let them drop away. So it's only the hands stopping them from falling all the way down, breathing out, contract the tummy, contract it all the way back, and one last time, breathing in, stretching away, arms stretching, breathing out, bring that belly close to the spine, as close to the spine as you can, so you have plenty of space to bring the knees right up to the armpits maybe. And then when they get there, you can just maybe hug them. And again, some nice little rock and roll. Just check my time. I'm gonna finish in a minute. Uh, just maybe rolling the knees around. So you really get a nice massage. Then bring the toes together. The big toes are coming together, knees are wide. And then just rotating the knees away from each other. And the other way. We're out of time in terms of doing the butterfly again, but that's something you could easily do at home. It really help to strengthen the inner thighs in a, in a gentle way, in a very accessible way. And come into your relaxation posture. Now, if you have sore knees, one of the really nice ways to come into relaxation is if you haven't got a bolster, a round bolster, you can use a pillow under the knees. And what I sometimes do, which I'm trying to do now, is roll up my mat. Rolling up my mat. Or you could roll up a towel, or if you have like a 
a fern blanket, one of those nice um, felt blankets from Ikea or an army and navy, um, army and navy store, that's okay. Um, come to lie in your shavasana for a few minutes, your relaxation pose, and bring whatever you can under your knees. Well, that's a really nice way to relax anyway. Opening out the body onto the floor with something supporting the knees. It can just be delicious, especially if you have a bigger bolster, you know, something that's quite big to release the whole of the back of the knee onto. And allow yourself to completely sink down onto your mat now. Letting the bones feel heavy letting the flesh spread, buttocks spread, the thighs, legs rolling out, arms rolling away, head beautifully poised on the floor, supported, and close your eyes for just a couple of minutes to relax after your nice Therapeutic work on your knees, your legs. And I'm going to leave you for two minutes. Just let go. Let go and let the yoga practice sink into your whole system. With your next inhalation, invite a more enlivening breath into your system, a deeper breath, maybe a longer exhalation, maybe rotating your ankles, your toes, give them a scrunch, your fingers, your wrists. Maybe take a long body stretch, maybe hug the knees to the chest, inviting your beautiful pranic energy into the body to get on with your day. Please come to your right side, roll over into the fetal position just for a few moments while we come and close our practice together. Your eyes closed, the energy nice and soft for a moment. Sitting up with a nice long spine. Eyes closed. And just notice how you feel. Notice how you feel after your practice. Bring your hands together at the heart. to your fingers, honour yourselves for coming and practising, maybe learning something new, maybe doing some self-care, taking care of yourself, 
And thank you for practicing with me. Namaste. Namaste. Please remember I'm teaching these sessions um, every week on a Sunday morning. If there are, I will do my best to accommodate any requests for specific uh, practices to help specific issues. The practices will stay in my feed uh, for a number of weeks um, on the Go Slow Yoga with Linda Premanandi. They are also uh, uploaded to um, YouTube. I managed to get my head around opening a YouTube channel, which again is Go Slow Yoga. Everything has the same name. Go Slow Yoga. So please pop onto there and subscribe. I need 100 subscribers before I can have a unique um, URL, so that would be helpful, but it's also the space where I'm going to land my documented practices throughout this year to my end game of becoming a fully qualified yoga therapist. If you want to practice yoga with me um, on other days, DM me and um, I'll put you into my private group. So, thank you very much. Sorry I've overrun a little few minutes. I'm used to practicing in an hour and a half, so I always find it a bit tough um, and hope it wasn't too dark. Thank you very, very much. All the best, guys. Have a lovely, lovely day. Bye bye.